Welcome to Gethsemane Baptist Temple, the voice of Calvary. Located in Star, South Carolina, we are a lively, old-time, Bible-believing, camp-meeting-style church where the shout has not died out. Join us now as our pastor, Sam Duncan, brings this week's message. Rising to meet our blessed Redeemer, with a glass shout I'll leave the ground. When I wake up, when I wake up to sleep no more, when I wake up to sleep no more, happy I'll be on heaven's bright shore. With the redeemed of all the ages, praising the one whom I adore. When I wake up to sleep no more, glory to God, I'll have a new body, changing the twinkling of an eye. When I wake up to sleep no more, leaving behind all trouble and sorrow, bound for that city up on high. When I wake up to sleep no more, when I wake up to sleep no more, happy I'll be on heaven's bright shore with the redeemed. Praise the one who I adore when I wake up to sleep no more. Yes, I'll wake up to sleep no more. Happy I'll be on heaven's bright shore. Telling the story with the redeemed of all the ages. Praise the one who I adore when I wake up to sleep no more. Jeremiah chapter 3 this morning. Seriously, you got Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Ezekiel out there in the Old Testament. Jeremiah uh, chapter 3. Uh, as we close out this year, uh, let me say, I do not know uh, what day the trumpet's going to sound, but you can say for certain one thing, uh, we're closer to it now than we have ever been before. It could still be in 2023. It might be in 2024. But the thing of it is we want to face God uh, the best that we can. Uh, God has given his best for us. Why can't we give our best for him? I want to challenge you today to live holy, to live righteously, and honor God in this next coming year. And I'm going to show you specifically how to do that. Jeremiah chapter 3, uh, he addresses uh, the mistakes of the children of Israel. We know in the New Testament, we are the children of God, the chosen people. Under the old covenant, Old Testament days, uh, the nation of Israel was God's chosen. Uh, and yet, they made bad mistakes. And I'm going to learn, uh, I hope we'll learn, uh, from their mistakes and not make the same. Jeremiah chapter 3. Let's pick up our reading in verse 21. And he said, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 21, A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they had perverted uh, their way, uh, and they have forgotten uh, the Lord uh, their God. Uh, and God then says, uh, Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal uh, your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord uh, our God. Drop to verse 24. For the sake of time, verse 24 says, Our shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. Uh, their flocks and their herds, uh, their sons uh, and their daughters. We lie down uh, in our shame and our confusion covereth us. 
for we have sinned against the Lord our God. We and our fathers from our youth even unto this day and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. I want to point you back to the last phrase of verse 21. It said they had forgotten the Lord their God. I want to preach about some things to never forget in 2024 and you could also title this message the greatest new year's resolution let's pray and ask God to be in our midst our father God we bow today in the presence of Almighty God. Lord, we do thank you uh, for the early service. and uh, That crowd has already come uh, and already gone. Uh, and I thank you, God, for the spirit you gave us uh, in that service and how the anointing of God uh, brought the preaching forth. But, God, we got a new crowd. We got a new opportunity. And I'm asking that uh, the anointing of God rest upon the preacher upon the preaching and upon the hearer. I pray that every one of us without exception would adopt this as our New Year's resolution. And God, that we'll always be aware of how important spiritual principles are in our everyday lives. Lord, I pray there'll be some things that we'll never ever allow ourselves to forget have your willing way meet with us God we pray it we ask it now in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus we humbly pray and all oh, God's people this morning loudly closed out the old year by saying what Amen uh, and amen. Thank you and you may be seated. Uh, let me begin this morning by telling you that the countdown uh, has already started uh, all across this globe uh, in different time zones uh, all uh, over the world. Uh, the countdown to midnight has already started. Uh, at the stroke of midnight tonight, 2023 uh, will become history and we'll have a brand new year of 2024 and the countdown is now in progress. Uh, let me say whatever you're going to do for God in 2024, you need to be laying the groundwork now uh, before uh, that it ever gets here. I've never seen anybody uh, whether they were drunk or sober at midnight on New Year's Eve wish anybody a terrible Terrible New Year. Everybody always says, Happy New Year. Well, let me tell you, it won't happen by accident. Unless we make some vows, unless we make some plans, unless we lay a groundwork now to live for God better in 2024 than we did this year, you have no right to expect it to be a happy year. Honey, but let me tell you, when you get under the spout where the glory comes out, you get plugged into God and you make those vows, uh, God sent his best for you and once we do our best for him then you have every right to expect the blessing of almighty God Folks, we need to make a vow, call it a New Year's resolution, call it a spiritual vow, whatever that you want to call it, but you need to determine up front, you'll not let yourself forget uh, the principles uh, of God. See, everybody wants a New Year's resolution. Man, I've heard people say, Brother Sam, I've already made a resolution, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Yeah, ha, ha, we'll say. 
Others say, my New Year's resolution, I'm going to quit smoking. Others say, my New Year's resolution, I'm going to quit drinking. Others say, I'm going to quit wasting money and start saving money. Hey, I'm not knocking any of those things, but every one of us, from that far wall to there, to that far wall, from the pulpit to the door, every one of us uh, made the need to make uh, a brand new vow uh, that we will not allow God uh, to get in the back of our minds but we'll keep God uh, in the forefront of our mind. That's the only way you can live right for 365 days. Uh, that's the only way you'll be able to live right for the next 52 weeks. Uh, you got to keep God in the forefront uh, of your mind which means uh, you cannot allow yourself to forget Get spiritual principle. Here's the thing, folks. Uh, so many people apply spiritual uh, principles while they're in church. But then all week, they don't think about it. Let me tell you, your blessing on Monday at work and your blessing on Tuesday at home and your blessing, whether whatever it is you're doing, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I mean, this thing goes around the clock uh, all the time. If you want to be happy and you want to be blessed, don't just put spiritual principles in place uh, on Sunday or on Wednesday, but you got to adopt it into your everyday lifestyle. I'm going to tell you what happened to Israel. Uh, they failed uh, to keep God in the forefront front of their mind. Let me tell you how stupid of a thing they did. You want to know it? Sometimes God's people do stupid things. Kind of like that fellow that was standing there and uh, had a cup of coffee in his hand. We asked him what time it was. People do stupid things. They just don't think about it. Somebody give me an amen. But let me show you what Israel did. Pop up uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Here's what God told them. Therefore shall you lay up these word, uh, these my words uh, in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets uh, between your eyes. Let me tell you what the Jews did. They got them uh, uh, like a pirate patch, you know, a patch that covers eye and got a stretch band, and they put it on the head and roll little scriptures up and put little pieces of scripture right there on that. Hey, folks, listen, that was stupid. <laughs> you know what God was trying to tell them? You let God be in the forefront uh, of your mind. Uh, if you want to be successful in 2024 with your family, with your career, with your spiritual life, with your family life, with your uh, uh, work life, whatever it is, we got to put God in the forefront of our mind and then not forget about him. I'm going to give you seven things this morning. You might not normally be a note taker. I'm going to ask you to write these seven things down because if you forget them, the devil will trip you up. Seven things uh, that every one of us need to remember if we're going to make it for the next 52 weeks, for the next 365 days, and if we're going to close 2024 out in church, serving God, you're going to need to remember these things. Look this way, folks. I'm not trying to sound negative. Every year, you know people and I know people that fall away from God. Think back from the year 2020. Think back to the year 2000. Think back to 1990. Think back to 1980. Think back as far as you want to think. There have been people that you know and that I know, and they served God, and I believe they were serious, but something came along a little later, and it tripped them up, and now today the FBI could not find them on Sunday morning. Let me tell you why. They first let God get in the back of their mind instead of the forefront, 
they forgot spiritual principles and just as soon as that nasty devil sees uh, that you've forgotten spiritual principles, he will jump right on you. He will attack you and before you know it, you'll be in sin and if you don't deal with the sin, it'll take you down uh, and it might eventually take your life. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, cost you more than you want to pay. Let me say first thing uh, that I hope everybody will not forget. Uh, don't ever forget this. Make yourself a vow on number one that I will never forget that there's no sin worth Losing the blessing of God for. Man, if you had you a set of scales, let me get up here. If you had a set of scales and you put on this side all of God's blessing. Oh, by the way, God's already blessed you a bunch this morning. First, he woke you up. He let your heart beat. He let your lungs breathe. He let the blood flow through your body. You probably got up on a cold morning in a warm house, got in a nice vehicle, wearing nice clothes, and made your way to the house of God. I mean, God's already blessed you uh, this morning tremendously, and he'll bless you even more. So look, and God doesn't just do it for one day. He does it for a life. Time. But what kind of moron, if you had a set of scales, would put a lifetime of God's blessing on this side and put some penny any stupid sin on the other side? Let me tell you, sin always hurts. Sin always means problems. I'm here to tell you on point number one, there's no sin worth Losing the blessing of God for. Pop up our first verse as you went and read it with me a little bit ago. Here's what he said. We lie down in our shame and our confusion covereth us for we've sinned against the Lord. Down at the bottom it said we have not obeyed the voice uh, of the Lord. Let me tell you right now, you can be saved uh, and you get pulled into sin and shame will overtake you. First we see his shame. Then we see his confusion. Do you see that online too? Let me tell you something. You get away from God. You let sin begin to dominate and rule in your life. It will affect your brain. I'm not trying to be smart or ugly, but let me tell you, you make bad decisions spiritually. Those bad decisions will also carry over in other areas of your life. According to that verse right there, they had sinned against the Lord. They didn't obey the voice of God. It brought shame, and it brought them confusion. And he said the confusion covered us. Hey, what I'm about to say, I'm not trying to sound uh, out of line here, but I'm going to say what I think God wants me to say. There's no sin out there where the pleasure can be equal to the pain. You fill in the blank on the pleasure. If it's something physical or fleshly or if it's booze or, or, or drugs or uh, stealing money, whatever that it is, I'm here to tell you there is no sin where the pleasure of it will be worth the pain uh, that you're going to bring to. It, it'll break your heart. It'll break your family's heart. It'll break your church's heart. Somebody give me an amen. I'm telling you, every day of 2024, remember there's no sin out there that's worth Losing the blessing of God for. And God will remove his hand of blessing. God will not bless sin. God will not bless immorality. No, sir, he'll remove uh, his hand of blessing. Guaranteed. Are you hearing me this morning? So the first thing, see, sin always brings hurt and tears and problems. 
times. And some of you might have thought a few moments ago I was being a little too brash when I said that sometimes sin will kill you. I want you to know it's Bible. I'll pop up our next verse. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Somebody want to argue with the Bible? Now, and the Bible also says there is a sin unto death. There's a line that you can cross over and you've sealed your doom. Somebody talk to me. I want you to be successful in 2024. I want to see everybody sitting church today at the end of 2024. I want to see you sitting right here in the house of God with somebody else with you that you've led to the Lord and brought to church with. And you be successful and you be smiling and you be happy. And the only way we're going to make it the next 52 weeks, the next 12 months, the next 365 days, you got to remember. Remember and not forget there's no sin out there worth losing the blessing of God for. You need God every day. We need him in the good days. We need him in the days that are not so good. But you need God and you need his blessing. Would somebody put an amen? And it won't happen if sin gets back in your life and takes over. So number one, before we move on, never forget, take a vow. I'll never forget that, that there's no sin. Doesn't matter what it is, you fill in the blank. No sin is worth losing God's blessing for. Number two, the second principle that God's laid on my heart to share with you, and boy, I believe this is a motivator. I believe this will keep people out of sin. We need to remember this right now. That remember, a vow to yourself that you'll never forget that sin breaks God's heart. Man, I, if you realize that, how can you go on when you get under temptation, something comes your way, and uh, uh, you get really strongly tempted, and you're about to give in to it. You stop, and you think about it. This is going to break the heart of God, the God that loves me and cares for me, the God that saved me, the God that blesses me, the God that gave me breath this morning, the God that makes my heart beat, the God that makes my lungs breathe, how can I turn around knowingly break the heart of God? When you think about that, it'll motivate you. Hey, let me tell you something. Did you know sin makes God feel betrayed? Did you know that sin makes God feel like he's been cheated on? It does. I'm going to show you a verse. It's in Jeremiah 3, but we didn't read it a while ago. But I'm going to pop it up on the screen. Every man, every woman here can relate to this kind of, of, of potential hurt. Here's what he said. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye treacherously so have ye dealt treacherously with me O house of Israel saith the Lord when God got ready to convey to us what we would understand and God thought for a minute and I know God knows all things but God thought and said what will it that they will understand uh, how that it hurts and how the betrayal is when they sin and God said I know every man that has a wife and every wife that has a husband they can relate to this if they've been cheated on and somebody done the hurt and the sadness and the problem Problems that it brings, and the, uh, he put that in there, and he said, Surely, as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. God said, I'm a heartbroken spouse. I feel betrayed. 
I feel cheated on. Let me ask you something, folks. The next time you get tempted for any sin and you think, if I do this, it's going to break God's heart. Do you think that might have a little bearing on keeping you straight? If you don't forget it, if you keep it in the forefront of your mind, between your eyes, as he said, and you remember that and not forget, that's one of the greatest deterrents of sin ever to know that if you go on and do something that you shouldn't do, it's going to break the heart of God. The God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But he loved you that much. Is that the way you're going to show him that you love him? By betraying God and cheating on him and like running off? Somebody say amen. Oh, I know this is not happy preaching. It ain't supposed to be. And I say ain't for emphasis. I know better. Somebody say amen. Man, let's go on. Boy, y'all look like y'all really enjoying this. No, everybody's. Let me say number three. The third principle, never forget. Take a vow you'll never forget that there's no sin worth hurting your children for. Lord, have mercy. No sin. Next time. You get tempted and something comes on you. You remember that child, whether it be your child, your grandchild, whomever that it might be. They love you and they're looking up to you. And folks, listen, it, it will not be worth breaking that child's heart. Next time the devil dangles booze in front of you and you know that what it's going to do to your family, your children, how in the name of heaven can you go on do it? Same thing about drugs and any other kind of sin. Notice this next verse with me. Pop that up. Shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. It's devoured the flocks and the herds. Comma, last phrase, it has devoured their sons and their daughters. Look this way. Did you know your children are sent from God to you? There are no accidents with God. If as a child shows up on earth, God is using that child. Proof verse. Show the next verse, please. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. I rest my case. That child that you have, God has placed that child, that grandchild, under your leadership, your authority, to show them love, but they're a heritage that came from God. Now, the next verse, everybody can pretty much quote. I want to show you the next verse. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he'll not depart from it. Listen to me. Children learn more by example than they do words. Listen to me, mama. If I hear you cussing a blue streak, or excuse me, a pink streak, it's a woman. It don't matter what color it is. If I hear you cussing and carrying on, don't you dare whip that kid when they say something out of line. You taught them. You've been a real good teacher. And daddy, if they see you drinking booze or they see you doing something they should, uh, that you shouldn't be doing, you have taught them well. But now by the same token, if you live a life like you're supposed to, that's going to bring that child up in the right way. True, sometimes they got to get a little older before their brain wakes up. A lot of people tell me, so Brother Sam, I brought my children up in church, and I'm, I'm having a little bit of a struggle right now. Well, the Bible said they got to get a little older, but it will come back to them. Hey, I remember, I, I learned, how many of you ever raised any chickens? Well, let me tell you something I learned years ago. The chickens come home to roost. You let those chickens go, they might wander way off, and you might think, boy, I'll never see them again. Boy, you wait to roost in time. 
They come home to roost. The way we raised our family, it's going to come home whether it be good or bad. But listen to me. There's no sin worth tripping your children up for. Let's say that child was raised right. They're an adult, but they're not where they need to be right yet. You might not know it, but they might be in the process of getting back where they need to be. And if you pull some stupid boner, it'd be like throwing your leg out and tripping your adult child, keeping them from getting back because they're still watching you. Never forget number three. There's no sin worth destroying your children over, hurting your children about. Somebody say amen. But everybody knows it, but most people forget it. And by the admonition in the scripture, we will not forget the things of God. Never forget, number one, there's no sin worth losing the blessing of God for. Number two, remember all sin breaks the heart of God. Number three, remember there's no sin worth hurting your children for. And number four, take a vow you'll never forget that there's no sin worth Losing the closeness of God for. Man, if y'all know what I'm talking about, when you know the closeness of God, Lord have mercy. When you're living under the spout where the glory comes out, and as people say, God is all over you. You feel his presence. It might not even be a good time. You might not be uh, going through good times. It might be something uh, tough. But you know what? God's with you and it's all right. You know God's got it. God's got you. And boy, in the good times, when you get under the spout where the glory comes out, you're shouting hallelujah, praise the Lord. Boy, God is good all the time. And how Man, you would not take anything for the closeness of God. But sin will separate you from the closeness of God. Next verse, pop it up. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplication, that's prayer, of the children of Israel. And Israel literally means people of God. E-L in Hebrew is the word God. Israel means the people of God. They perverted their way and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Let me tell you. Help me a time you're going to need God. You need him every day. There will really be a time you're going to need God's closeness you're going to need God's presence. And if you've let some two-bit little old filthy sin come in, and even though God still loves you, but that sin has taken and separated you away from that closeness. You know, every now and then people will come to me and say, Brother Sam, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved, but... Years ago, I had this, that, or the other, and they might name something. He said, and I, I just don't feel God like I used to. You know what they've done? They've let a sin separate them from that closeness. Now, you can get it back. He said it in the text, return to me, you backsliding children, and I'll take care of you. I'll heal you. Everything will be all right. But you got to make that effort. But the reason that some people, they've let a pet sin come in, and now they're weeping and they're praying and they're asking God, restore that joy to me. Let me feel your presence. And they don't feel it like they used to. Boy, you'll look then if you got that scale and say to lose the presence of God over a moment of some stupid sin. Good. Are you with me this morning? Oh, I like happy messages. I do. I like it camp meeting style. But sometimes as a pastor, you got to preach like this. This is the last day of the new year. At midnight tonight, we're going into a new year, and we got to make that year count for God. It might be the year of the trumpet. You don't face God with some sin 
creep back in your life. All down through history, people might have served God and some of them have fallen by the wayside. You want to know why? They forgot these spiritual principles and how important they are, not just on Sunday and Wednesday, but in their everyday life. Number five, everybody hear me on this one. Maybe this will speak to you. If something else, maybe about your children and about God has it. Number five, take a vow that you'll never forget. There's no sin worth destroying your livelihood for. Let me get around here again. I'm going to get my scale back out. On this side, I looked it up, Brother Bobby. Some people might make more. Some people might make less. But the average salary is about $38,000. Now, $38,000 might not sound like much. It might sound okay. But $38,000 alone, I'm not talking that. Let's use 10 years. $38,000 for 10 years that's $380,000. And a career is usually more than 10 years. Let's say it's 20 years. Because you've got to double that. You know what it becomes? $760,000. That's starting to get people's attention now. Well, you put on this side of the scale three quarters of a million dollars or more versus Stealing $50 from the boss man getting fired. Are we making a little sense? Never forget there's no sin worth destroying your livelihood. You say, well, Sam, I never steal. Well, might not, but some of you drink. You can get fired for drinking. You can get fired for drugs. Take a drug test. Somebody give me an amen. I'm trying to say there's no sin out there worth having to live a destitute life, your children having to live a destitute life, and then when you become a grandparent later on and want to do something for the grandchildren, and you're still destitute all because of a stupid sin that only lasted just a tiny little flicker of time. Everybody with me? No sin is worth it. These are the things we got to remember. Now, I'm going to get real with you. Don't nobody get upset. Da da da. Da da da. Somewhere along the line, mister, a she devil will show up. And don't, ladies, don't get mad at me. Ma'am, somewhere along your path. A he devil will show up. And let me tell you, it can cost you more than anything could ever, ever, ever be worth. It can cost you your family. It can cost you your job. Sometimes this even costs people their lives. Shootings and things. Y'all still on? Y'all still awake? Well, good. The ball's going to drop after a while. <laughs> a drink of booze and lose uh, $750,000 million from being from, let go from a job. Is that worth it? Not been able to pass a drug test over something stupid. Is that worth losing three quarters to a million dollars? Stealing fifty dollars out of the cash register from your boss man lose is is that fifty dollars worth more to you than a half a million or three quarters of a million? Of course not. But people make decisions like that all the time. Let me tell you why. They put God back in the back. He's not in the forefront of their mind. They've allowed themselves to forget. And you're no different, and I'm no different than anybody else. 
if we forget the importance of spiritual principles, some of us will get pulled into something stupid. And boy, will you pray, will you pay for it for years and years and years to come. Number six, I'm trying to watch the time. I want to make sure I'm finished by midnight. <laughs> Number six, the six for make a vow that you'll never put anything ahead of the Bible. Make a vow up front. I will never put anything ahead of the Bible. I, I, there's some things I don't understand. I hope you're not going about to get mad. But if you do, your problem's going to be with God and not with me. But I'm going to tell you, you let somebody's favorite politician come out and say, well, there's nothing wrong with the homosexual movement. And you turn around and vote. Put your stamp of approval on a person who has already said that they think their opinion carries more weight than God's. I'm here to tell you that Bible has got to be the final and absolute authority. And in 2024 or any other year, if you put somebody's opinion, a politician of any political party or some so-called movie star come out, maybe they're your favorite one because they say something's right. If God says it's wrong, who you going to believe? Who you going to decide to go with? Madonna? I don't even know who she is. I just know the name. <laughs> who you going to go with? Name somebody. Brandon, name some worldly star. I know you know a bunch of them. <laughs> Tom Selleck. <laughs> okay. If Tom Selleck comes out and says that you don't need to go to church and all that stuff. Are you going to believe Tom? Are you going to believe Jehovah God? Are you going to believe his son Jesus? I'm here to tell you, I don't care what Joe Biden says. I don't care what Nancy Pelosi says. And it doesn't matter any of them. If they come out and say something that's against the word of God, I am not going to turn around and put my stamp of approval on them because they've already said they think they know more than God. How can we expect to have a nation that prospers and blessed? If we're doing everything, God said, don't do that. Don't do that. And we're doing it anyway. And I'll pick on people of both parties. I just happen to name the, the nuts that's in charge right now. <laughs> Somebody say something. Good gracious. If you put anything ahead of the Bible, you're wrong for it. Oh, and while we're talking about putting things ahead of the Bible, we have church every Sunday. Even if Sunday is Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve or Fourth of July or Christmas Day, and I don't want to put anything ahead of the Word of God. And let me close out with this thing, and I'll tie a few things together. The seventh principle I'm pleading with you to make a vow that you'll never forget. Here it is. That you'll re always remember. There's no sin. There's no worldly pleasure. There's no worldly thing worth suffering for. Have you ever noticed that a lot of the same things that are sins are also crimes? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's lying. All those are charges. <coughs> and look, folks, there's no sin worth having to suffer for. Right now, let's say this. Steal some money I'd register where you work or from the boss. You might just lose your job. If that's all it is, consider yourself 
okay. Because you might end up serving some time. Serving time, you will be keenly aware that no worldly pleasure, no worldly thing is worth having to suffer for. You go steal the wrong, I say the wrong thing, steal things that's got a heavy charge to it. You might end up serving 10 years over stealing some, something that's no big deal. Now you tell me, is that worth it? There are people that serve 20 years. And there are some people that have gone above and beyond with crime and sin, and they have having to serve a lifetime. And there are some that have received capital punishment. You talk to any of them in any prison, and they'll tell you if they've been there any length of time, it was not worth it. I want to reiterate, remember in the forefront of your mind, no sin, no worldly pleasure, and no worldly thing is worth having to suffer for. And God addressed that. I'm talking about from the point of view of jail. And it's even in the Bible. Pop up Romans 13. Romans 13. I might have skipped a verse or so. Here we are. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be, that's the police, that's the legal system, the judicial system, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Then he goes on to say this. For rulers or policemen or whatever, they're not a terror to good works. It doesn't scare you if one gets behind you if you're not doing something that was wrong. It'll scare you to death if you got a dead body in the trunk. <laughs> it scare you if you got stolen merchandise in the vehicle. For rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. He said, you do, let me paraphrase that, paraphrase, little, paraphrase that when it says, do that which is good, and you'll have praise of the same. It means as long as you do what's right, you don't want to defund the police. <laughs> for he's the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, yeah, be afraid. For he that beareth, for he that beareth not the sword in vain, or you could say he doesn't bear that glock in vain. For he's the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. God is simply saying that sin and crime go hand in hand. And no sin or crime is going to be worth having to suffer for. And then ultimately, somebody will suffer in eternity if we haven't lived our lives like we should have. Pop up the last verse in the computer. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations, listen, that there's that word again. Our original text said they forgot the Lord. And all the nations said forget God. And he's warned us, and we've seen it in several places. Don't you forget how important the principles of God are. If you let those things just get in the back, they won't be, they won't be in the forefront. They won't be seen enough, and it won't be reminder. I'm saying today, Make yourself a vow to remember the importance of spiritual principles in, listen, our everyday life. Not just our church life, every day. And it'll produce a better quality person. And if enough people do it, it'll produce a better quality community. And enough people do it, it will produce a better quality state. And if enough people do it, It'll produce a better quality 
nation. And if enough people still do it, it'll produce a better quality of a world to have to live in. I'm sure you probably have already said or will say to somebody, Happy New Year. It doesn't just happen. It's got to be a plan in place. We got to be willing to do something to change the course to make it what it ought to be. Please don't forget we're standing on the doorstep right now of 2024. Less than 12 hours from right now. I'll go ahead and tell you it's 12.08. Less than 12 hours from now we'll be living in 2024. Unless we get a plan developed. And I hope you got these things down and review it from time to time. But simply say, I'm not going to let myself forget God. Keep it right here. That's the strongest deterrent. And I look at my children and grandchildren. To me, that's a deterrent. I'd hate for them to think their papa or their daddy was a scoundrel. Somebody give me an amen. That's a deterrent. Breaking the heart of God is a deterrent. We've got to remember these things. Israel was his chosen people of the old covenant, and I'm done in a second. We're his chosen people in this day and age, and we're doing the same thing as they did back then. One more time. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Our original text, they perverted their way. They forgot the Lord their God. Our Father God, we bow in your presence right now, asking, Lord, you to take this message. I know it's been a little pointed and it's been direct, but, Lord, let us realize there's no sin out there worth breaking your heart for or breaking the heart of our children or our grandchildren or hurting our testimony. Lord, we could have gone on and on, but right there in that one passage in Jeremiah 3, it tells us all of this. Help us, Lord, to never put anything ahead of the Bible. Let us honor your word, follow your word, stay in your word, study your word, and let us realize the more the word we get in us, the better quality of life that we're going to have. Speak to every heart in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Brother Steve, let's sing some more today. God bless you for being faithful.
hope you have enjoyed this week's broadcast of Gethsemane Baptist Temple, the voice of Calvary. We invite you to join us here each week. Or better yet, join us on Sunday at 6116 Highway 81 South in Star, South Carolina. For more information, visit us online at www.gbtemple.com. We look forward to seeing you in church Sunday.